What's up, everybody? This is the Ike's Inspirations Podcast, and today I have a very, very special guest on. His name is Billy Garrett, and he is the first NBA player to have sickle cell disease and make it to the NBA. And so his story is incredibly inspiring for me personally. Um, I have sickle cell myself, and so to hear him talk about his story and how he got to where he is, is incredibly inspiring. So I'm so grateful to have you on. Billy, can you please do us a favor and introduce yourself and just give us information about who you are? Yeah, for sure, man. First, uh, I want to thank you for having me on. Um, means a lot, you know, because it's, it's always nice to connect with other single cell warriors and just kind of share experiences. Um, so, you know, first and foremost, just want to do that. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I'm a, uh, I'm the first person to play in the NBA with sickle cell disease, um, SC disease. Um, also wrote a book, you know, kind of talking about my journey, um, to doing that called Over to the Warrior, um, and kind of talked about having sickle cell and going through that whole process and then the basketball side of everything and just kind of the metaphysical uh, process I had to go through in order to get um, to where I got in the basketball world. But more importantly, like what it told me, um, you know, beyond the sequel cell and the game itself. So, um, you know, that's kind of who I am, a little background on what I've, what I've been doing recently. Um, you know, I'm sure we'll dive into a lot more, but, you know, yeah. give people a little background. Yeah, man, I got I got so many questions for you, man. So, what was your journey, man? Like the first question I want to start off is, what, what was your journey like going into the NBA and playing basketball, especially as one someone with sickle cell? I'm sure that journey must have been unique. How was yeah, that? For sure, for sure. Um, you know, first, you know, I, I grew up in a basketball family. My dad's a college basketball coach. Um, has been for since I was born. Um, so almost 30 years, my, uh, grandfather was the first, uh, African American to play in a big 10 conference. Um, so, you know, I got like a long lineage of, of basketball, uh, players and coaches in my family. Um, so I say that to say I was kind of born into it. Um, you know, so for, so for me, it started how any other, any other journey would start for any kid for the most part, um, you know, playing youth basketball, youth sports baseball football all those things um gravitated toward basketball I was always around it um and it was like one it was a constant in my life you know what i mean because uh you know we would move around a lot just my dad being a coach whenever he was coaching somewhere we'd have to move and go there um uh, so you know i was born in chicago grew up on the east coast for a while um back to chicago i made a stop at iowa new mexico man i've been all over so um basketball was the one constant there um you know i won't i won't bore you guys with too too many like details on it but like once I got to high school I was a pretty good player uh won the state championship there um went to college was rookie of the year my freshman year at DePaul University uh playing for my dad he was an assistant coach there at the time so uh once I got there had some success individually but didn't have much team success left college did wasn't getting drafted um didn't have much interest from the NBA so I went to the G League um, so if you follow the NBA, you might know what the G League is, but not it's like the developmental league of the NBA. Uh, went there, had to make a team, like went to an open tryout. Um, they bought me to New York, went to an open tryout with their G League team, um, made the team, and then, you know, worked my way into a little bit of playing time, turned into more playing time, turned into more playing time. Um, and before you knew it, I was, uh, I was getting signed by the Knicks my second year. So they bought me in a training camp, then they cut me. Um, so, you know, uh, it, it technically counts as making the team, but I wasn't really there. They cut me before yeah. the regular season started. Um, so went back to the G League, same team, uh, played there for, for that season. And then, uh, eventually got signed by the New York Knicks, left that G League team as an all-time leading scorer there. Um, and a uh, year and uh, two years I was there, I'm sorry. Um, then went to the NBA. Yeah, been playing in Europe since then. Um, yeah, man. So that's kind of been my journey as a basketball player. Um, been all over, you know, been through ups and downs as everybody has with any any profession. Um, but then on top of that, you had the sickle cell. So, you know, I was fighting that enemy that they won't call it enemy. I was fighting a battle that nobody else really knew about outside of, you know, people that had it. And yeah. outside of that, a lot of people don't understand what the disease is. So I was dealing with that on top of playing the basketball. Um, but, you know, it, it had its benefits for sure. Yeah, man. So, you know, I was reading in your book and in the book, you talk about the very moment 
where you actually figured out that you got into the NBA, you know, you, you weren't really expecting it. Like the call was just kind of random and like, you're kind of like, man, yo, fuck this, bro. I'm going to go back. You know, I'm going to leave. Cause you weren't expecting to get into the NBA. Then all of a sudden you get this call and you know, and you, you, you know, and, and you get that call that you're, you're making it to the league, bro. Can you please describe that experience? What was that like? Uh, and how did you feel, you know, after like getting that call? That must have been like the most surreal feeling like of all time, it, I would imagine. It was insane. It was insane. Cause like, you know, imagine that you work from something, we worked for something since you were a kid, right? So, um, you know, you're, you're a young kid, you're thinking about, you're dreaming about playing in the NBA. Like, that's kind of what just every kid has at some point they want yeah. to be a professional athlete, right? So, I had that dream it. too. <laughs> you feel me? So, yeah. So, so, you get to the point where you it's, it actually might be tangible, right? Yeah. So when you get in there and 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 you have a success, you're like, oh, hold on, I'm kind of good at this. You in high school, you in college, you in college, you're looking, you're like, oh man, like they got me. Like they think I might go to the league. Like I'm on a yeah. draft board. You don't have the success that you want to have all four years. Um, and then you go to the G League, so you at ground zero. So you're really getting it out the mud, bro. Like it's really like a like it's like a it's like the wild out there in the G League. Like you really try everybody scratching and clawing to get to the NBA. Um, so I was making a team. I wasn't a guy coming in like with a bunch of minutes and a role in the G League, man. So um I had to fight through that, got through that part. Uh, and then I started having success where I could see it. Like it was a clear, it was a clear like pathway to the league for me. I'm like, oh, this might happen. So mm-hmm have more success and at this point people tell me like yo it's about to you about to get that call like it's gonna happen it's gonna happen so the season ends um and and the g league season ends because the g league season ends before the nba season and i didn't get the call i was expecting and my numbers at that point were through the roof like i was like i said i was the all-time league scorer for for that g league team that franchise like nobody that played there had scored more points mm-hmm. in their career playing so i'm like man they gotta show love like when that day comes, mm-hmm. nothing, right? You can get a call any day. Like, you can get a call the second day of the season or the last day of the season. Like, so yeah. I never got the call. Um, I'm packing my bag, about to go back to Chicago into the season, and I'm sick. Like, I was in my feelings. I was I was kind of immature. I was young. So I was sure. like, man, this is, man, like, I guess it wasn't meant to be. Like, it ain't everything that, that they say it is because I, I didn't yeah. done everything I needed to do, right? So I, I get upset and I fire my agent. I'm like, man, somebody got to take a fall because it's no reason I'm not getting a fall. Yeah. Which was like, that, was, that, was, that wasn't cool. So I did that. Um, fired him like, say I fired him at like four o'clock, right? Yeah. The day. I, I'm packing my flight leaves in the morning. You know, I'm, I'm kind of down a little bit. I was, I was tripping, to be honest. But uh, we order food. Who calls? We think it's Uber. So, well, I think it's Uber. He's calling me like, yo, I'm at the, I'm at the apartment front door. Like, can you come let me up? So I, I go get the phone. I'm like, hello, I'm just expecting to buzz him up. And he's like, hey, this is, uh, uh, Craig Robinson of, uh, and I, I knew Craig. So like, we was cool. Like I, I knew, but when I heard his name, I'm like, I mean, when I heard his voice, his name, I'm like, like Craig, what you what? calling me for, bro? Like, what the hell? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> he calls me and he's like, yo. Like congratulations on a good season. Like you, you, and I thought it was just like some, you know, um, some pity. Like congratulations, yeah. even though you ain't get what you wanted. Yeah, but like, good job, good one, like, bro. Good job. And I'm like, man, he and he like a director of player personnel for the New York Knicks. So yeah. he like a he's a he's a heavy up dude. He a big dude. He like he's he's big up dude. So yeah. um, yeah, man. So he 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 tells me that, and I'm like, ah, oh, thanks, you know, thanks, uh, Mr. Robinson. And I appreciate, I really appreciate the opportunity. You know, you keeping it professional. He was actually, he's a great guy. Like, he's so, so we were having a, a genuine conversation. He's like, yo, your bag's packed. I'm like, yeah, you know, everything's packed, bags at the door. Like, I'm leaving in the morning. I'll uh, head back to Chicago, you know, for the off-season and train and do whatever. He's like, all right, cool, man. I'm going to need you to, like, unpack your bags because this is what he said. Like, I'm going to need you to unpack your bags because uh, uh, we're going to sign. So when he said it, like I'm thinking, I thought it was Uber, bro. So I'm, you know what I mean? Like I'm not expecting any of this to happen. <laughs> and my yeah. teammate is looking at me. He's standing there, staring at me, like, bro, why are you on the phone with these people so long? I guess the food. Yeah. Be- yeah. So he's just looking at me, and I'm looking at him, like, like stuck. So once I heard him say that he was gonna sign me, I didn't say anything, like, because I didn't know what I wasn't expecting. So he's on the yeah. line. He's like, 
are, are you there? Hello? I'm like, yeah, I'm there. Uh, thank you, man. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, I don't even remember what I said. I did not be honest with you. Man. Yeah. You no, know, oh, man, I dropped the phone. I just started crying like, on the spot. Damn. Like on the spot, started crying. Like it was just, you know, because it's a super yeah. easy thing. And you For don't sure. know it's going. I didn't know it was going. I, I was genuinely surprised. Yeah. Um, which was cool, man. That was just a cool experience. And so, um, and me and my teammate in there, we just got that going crazy. And then I start calling all my homies. I call my mom. Yeah. <laughs> and then he uh, went from there. But I had to lock in because um, I do remember him saying, like, yo, be at the airport in the morning. We're going to Orlando. For sure. Um, so I had, to, I had to get ready. Get back to reality. Airport. Yeah, earlier in the morning, and then I had to go play basketball. And then, yeah, that was a great moment. Dude, yeah, man. You know, you, you, you as soon as you got that call, you know, you said you, you, you were crying, man. And, yeah. you know, I think for you, like, I mean, you, like, you know, you, you, you accomplished your dream of going to the NBA, which, I mean, literally there's millions of dudes who wish they could be in your position. But then I, I know you also tied it to the fact that, you have sickle cell and you kind of realized that it was bigger than you and 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 because of that that it made you it made the moment even that much more surreal and so i mean i'm dude like i'm just so glad that you had that opportunity to do that you know um i i guess i want to go in and then i want to ask you because i'm very curious like you know you had so many ups and downs bro like you know what i'm saying once you got to the nba like did how did sickle cell play a role in you with how did it play a role in your in your mba like did were there stigmas against it were there like people who were like now nah, i'm not gonna draft this guy even if he's going 25 26 just going crazy like i don't want to yeah. take that risk like how did that play a role in your journey to <laughs> the nba <laughs> yeah so when i when i got signed the first the first initially um uh, it wasn't any it didn't even come up to be honest, because like, which is also, it was a benefit in, in that situation, but it also goes to show how much more uh, like spreading of awareness we have to do as a collective when it comes to sickle cell, because a lot of people didn't necessarily know what it was. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So on top of me playing and having success during that season, they didn't even ask any questions because they figured out oh, he playing probably good. Like, you know, all with him. Yeah. All right, you got sickle cell. Like, but I don't even know if they knew, to be honest. Cause like they didn't, yeah. they never gave me a hard time. When I went to college, it was the first time where they really, really gave me a hard time. I won't say a hard time, but they were hesitant because they hadn't seen it before. Yeah. And in college, you could you could be like kind of they didn't want they didn't want like a they didn't know. So in their eyes, they like, oh, you got sickle cell. The last thing we need is for this kid to faint or fall or fall out or just, yeah you know some some terrible happened on the court like that's a liability for us like we don't need that um so i had to like go through a lot of doctors and uh things like that because it's it's the ncaa so you know it's a, it's uh they're a little bit more uh focused on making sure everything they just don't want that on nobody will want that right in, in, yeah yeah in, i understand in, in sports so, um, you know, so I went through a lot of tests. Uh, I used to have a trainer that would just follow me around, like practice with, with a bottle of water, like anytime it would annoy me. Yeah, man. It, but it would like, <laughs> it, it would piss me off, man. I'd be like, <laughs> at that time, like my ego was kind of in the way. So I didn't want, I wouldn't even tell people I had it. I didn't want like yeah. them to look at me and, and, you know, kind of treat me any differently than they did any other player, especially when you would do that contributes on the team. Like you don't want to be, um, you don't want to be looked at as a special case in a sense, right? So if we're running yeah. and and my cardio, you know, my cardiovascular uh, capacity and is isn't as high as other players, and I'm getting tired and I'm not making the times and all that, like my ego would have me like, man, like damn, like I can't. They gonna look at me like I'm weak, and like I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so that would that would be tough for me. Um, and that would that would send me into a lot of crisis, especially until I got like decided mm -hmm. to understand my body more. Mm -hmm. As a kid and going into college, man, I'm grabbing right here. But yeah, once I got to the NBA, they didn't ask any questions, and they just kind of wow. allowed me to allow me to play. And, wow. and at that at that rank, it's it's the professional ranks, right? So they yeah. make their own rules and they doing what they want to do. But in the G League, when I got there, they didn't have any questions. 
then I, wow. you know, and then I got my success later. And once I had the success, I had already had a track record of being able to play, you know, hospital, no hospitalizations and all that stuff. So, um, they never even questioned, at least to me, I don't know if they knew something behind the scenes. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes in the, in the, in the pros. Um, but to me personally, I didn't have to go see any doctors or anything like that. Wow, man, that is so interesting. I would have thought that it got harder the more you level up, like the scrutiny would increase. But I guess for you, that wasn't the case. But anyways, no, I mean, no. dude, I mean, it's great for you because it, it helped facilitate your journey. And I'm glad I you, there wasn't any stigmas. I was I was expecting to hear a lot of setbacks and just that in itself. But I guess no, not. No, not until uh, like once I started playing in Europe, um, there was oh, wow. there was one team I played for in Europe because they had seen sickle cell before in the yeah. country. They were, they, you know, I mean, they were just a little bit more hesitant because, you know, it, it primarily affects people of color, uh, yeah. people in Medis- Mediterranean climates, things like that, man. So like they had never seen it. So they didn't know yeah. what it was just out of yeah. like hesitancy. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't allow me to play there. You know what I mean? Cause it was like, Oh, we don't know what this is. Like, and this mm-hmm. is something serious. Like, why are you, I'm not sure. Like, why are you? Yeah. Doing it? Oh, and a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people are scared to embrace the unknown and, and whatnot. So yeah, exactly. I, I could definitely, sure. I could definitely get that, you know, sure. from a business but, standpoint, you kind of understand it. It's like, all right, yeah. you know, don't know what it is, but it's like, damn, like, but that was disappointing, but that's only happened to me a year. Um, and in other places that I play in the pros and NBA and nothing, they didn't, wow. they didn't even bat an eye, man. Yeah. Wow. Okay, man. Yeah, well, that that's I'm glad to hear that, bro. You know, one thing, dude. I I I literally this is like for me a million dollar question that I have to figure out for you, bro. How the hell did you condition yourself with sickle cell? You know, I I know you're in the book and you're talking about how much you hate conditioning. I love basketball, bro, and I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. As a sickle cell warrior, I had so much issues with with conditioning bro I, and it would be frustrating bro like you know we'll do a full court five on five game and i will be going up it will be very it'll be it'll be very frustrating because you know say we score like six or seven points i might have like three or four points in the beginning and then yes. i'm just tired i'm yes. gassed <laughs> and, then I, and then i'm gassed and 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 not only that i i you know when I was younger, I had an ego and I would play through it and then I would get fucked and, you know, go to the hosp- hospitalized. As I've gotten older, my ego has gotten better and I would literally remove myself from the situation. But imagine a move removing yourself from a five on five basketball. Like that doesn't really happen, you know, like so it's kind of like and then I yeah. and then I was too embarrassed to tell people I had sickle cell disease. So what I would do is like, hey, I have asthma. I, I just can't do this anymore. I got to go. Yeah. But, and, you know, that was something that has been a reoccurring theme for me in high school, yeah. in college. I, I didn't play professionally like you, but I yeah. always felt like if I didn't have sickle cell disease, I could have been a much better basketball player, you know? Yeah. How did you condition, man? I'm so curious. Yeah, man. So, um, you know what? Like, there's no, for me, there's no secret to it. There was no secret to it. Like, I'm, I'm, an, I'm just like an extremely persistent guy. Um, and, and like, straddling the lines of like like insane when it comes to like something that i love especially the sport so like Damn. when i was a kid man i, I credit my parents because they didn't necessarily allow me to look at single cells as a crutch so like my ignorance allowed me to just kind of go out there and say fuck it. Go mm-hmm. to the you know what i mean like i would be willing i wouldn't duck in a hospital bit like i would and that's not healthy i'm not i'm not advocating that at all for yeah me. Watching that sickle cell. i was a kid so i didn't know any better um, but you know, I would just push it. I would push it, man. And and like when I say push it, I mean genuinely like to the point where like I can't go no more and yeah, all right, I'm going to the hospital. Yeah. And when it when it came to that, like I I would I would go through, you know, the crisis and I would have crisis as a kid, I would have some like a few times a month, like at least. You know what I mean? So um and, and when you're, we also when you're a kid, you're not training like I'm not training like I'm a triathlete or something. I'm just out there, just you know, going as hard as I can. Um, yeah. And and I was always able to. And this is, I I, I can credit my parents for this too. It's like I, I was always pretty present. I, I never like took like a past sickle cell experience and like carried it over and like caused me to have fear like in the moment. You know what I mean? So 
Mm-hmm. Like I would say, for example, I go play somewhere and I, you know, go through a crisis. Um, after that, I go back, try it again. And I just got a little wow. bit stronger each time. Like I got a little bit, a little bit stronger each time. You pretty much stopped about how, like, how, like, even though you go through a crisis, you still want to go, which it, to me is incredible because mm-hmm. that pain is so freaking traumatic. No, it's, like, it's, I don't it's, know it's how. I don't, it's like, it's like, cause I'm trying to explain for people who don't have getting sick or so, it's like sure. getting shot by a gun and then you're like, oh, I'm still going to play basketball. Like, I don't yeah. know how to, it's like incredible pain. It's by far the most painful thing I've ever been through. And for you to be that persistent and still want to go, I don't know how you have that. Co- you must really love basketball because I'm yeah. trying to put it in the minds of people who don't have sick or so. It's like, imagine you just get, you keep on getting stabbed in the needle like every oh, time. Fuck. And despite getting stabbed or punched or shot, like however, you're like, I don't care. I'm still gonna play basketball. Like that's yes, that's incredible to me, bro. 100%. And then I don't. I'm sorry. I'm just. I know I'm projecting myself on. No, no, no. Talk to me. But yeah, if me. I'm going through this traumatic pain that you're going through, right? Yeah. And, and this is something I personally struggled through with working out. It scares me from going to the hardest. Like even if I do decide to play, I don't want to go all out. Like you, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. of what happened. So for the fact for you that you still have that courage to want to just keep going all out, yeah. I saw you, man. I, you know, I don't yeah. know how you do it. No, honestly, that's the difference right there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like a. I'll talk to people that have an understanding of what sickle cell is, or they have it themselves. It was like, bro, the only difference is like, my 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 ignorance allowed me to like push a boundary, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't care. I didn't care. I was like, man, listen, I, I, it's either like, and this is dramatic, but it's like, bro, I I I die trying to do what I want to do. Like, I don't. I just, I I'd rather do that than not do this at all. Like, uh, so, so like yeah. that's really where my head was at wow. and i'm a kid too though like let's you know let's get that understood it's like this like psyche was developed as a child so like yeah. when i'm a kid i'm doing this like you know what i mean i was pushing it and my mom did a good job of balancing me out and like making sure but we would even bump heads because she would like try to make sure you know i'm staying i'm staying responsible and staying safe and i'm like man i'm trying to go for it like no i want to go do another i'm gonna do another all right what a crisis i'm in the hospital for a week uh uh what i need blood transfusion all right damn like i'm going through all these things but like when i would get through it i would be like all right we back what's next like let's do it like, yeah, yeah. You know what <laughs> Yo, that's uh, crazy bro yeah bro so like and, and i don't even know how to explain a sickle cell crisis pain to somebody like the best yeah. way i tell them it's like bro I'm like, have you ever like had morphine? I'm like, that's what they're gonna give you, like for starters, like morphine. That's like the yeah. level of pain that you like. That's a, that's a controlled like thing. Like morphine is is, is heavy, bro. Like so they mm-hmm. they're giving that to children. Like you know what I mean. So it's like mm-hmm. that kind of puts it into perspective for for how serious um the pain is. But yeah, man, like it, it's simple mathematics for real when it comes to me and being an athlete. I just was pushing it, and then I picked up knowledge. Like as the time went on what worked for me i'll get a little bit better get a little bit better get a little bit better get a little bit stronger make sure i'll make sure i'm maintaining everything that keeps my body healthy eating clean sleeping right stress levels low like all that um and even then i would run into a crisis or two but then you know i'm you know i'm blessed enough to not have had any in the past probably the past year or two bro congratulations yeah appreciate that man so um yeah, man, that that's really how we that's how we've been able to kind of accomplish what we've accomplished. Um, and it's it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And on top of that, like not ducking, not not half assing any other workouts or anything like that. Like really pushing it and trying to like you know making sure my cardio work is cool, making sure I, I, I'm 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 consistent on that, and understanding too what what took a lot of weight off my shoulders is understanding that my body's like. It, the makeup of it is different than that of a person that's just playing sports. So like when I'm running, yeah. when I'm when I'm trying to, you know, reach these heights as an athlete, and I'm a body, I, I can't get to where I want to get to at that point. You know, as far as uh, like my condition is concerned, like not getting down on myself, man, that was a hard thing for me to do. I'm like, I would get mad at myself, yeah. like I'm not different from everybody, and then that that yeah. just didn't make sense. It was just immature, you know what I mean? So yeah, but competing like I'm normal though, you know what I mean? Yeah, pushing it like I'm normal until it like put me down and put me in the hospital and then we back at it again. But yeah, it's, it's not for everyone I say, but like, 
I can't recommend that because it's, it's tech. It's not probably the most responsible way to approach it. But bro, that's how that's how I was doing it for sure. Bro, it's like you know, it's like essentially the quote: "We my ignorance is bliss." And you, yeah. uh, you know, I guess sometimes ignorance is a good thing. You know, you're you're so young and dumb, you didn't know any better, but it kind of allowed you to take that risk. And so yeah. sometimes it is like a reminder that we can get too over calculated and pursuing whatever we want to do. And yeah. dude, it's like as you know, you said so much things that I, I want that I also want to talk to you about because you know, um, just like you, um, I'm. I've been blessed to be pretty healthy. I'm a pharmacist. Um, and so learning about f- having the medical background and knowledge I do, I use, mm-hmm. I took, I took it on myself to learn as much about sickle cell as, as I can. So I can mm-hmm. do everything I can to be healthy. And essentially mm-hmm. I've been um, like you, I've been pretty healthy for the most part. I haven't had a crisis in a while and mm-hmm. um, I don't really get crises as often. And mm-hmm. so I guess what, one of the things is, is that despite me being relatively healthy, I'm going to be honest, the hardest thing about having sickle cell for me is the psychological impact of it. You know, just kind of knowing that likelihood I'm going to have this for the rest of my life and how it impacted me and how traumatic it was. You know, sickle cell is very hard for me psychologically to deal with, especially when I was younger. Um, I've gotten a lot better at it, honestly. Um, I, I find my own practices and ways of coming to peace at it. But I want to ask you about you and how sickle cell affects you psychologically and how you deal with that. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Um, um, first, like, you know, what whatever it is that you do for yourself, like, keep doing that and keep building that. Um, that routine. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Um, you know, yes. blessings to you and blessings to you on that journey. But uh, I would say, you know, for me, and, and that's a lot of the reason why I wrote the book. Like, I feel like people who who read it. Like it'll it'll talk about sickle cell and it'll give you a background of my life and everything I've been through, but it's kind of more so about the 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 metaphysical, really more the psychological For aspect sure. of approaching the disease. Because yes. like that's really where the damage is done. Yeah, you really think about it. For me, anyway. For sure. Um, so you know, it's not necessarily a uh, for those who 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 will read it. It's not necessarily a book about the details of sickle cell. It'll talk about it and talk about the journey and what we go through and some yes. of the ups and downs of having it, but also on the back end, it's more about like the the psychological aspect of having the disease and dealing with it sure. and going through life. Um, so for me, again, that was like a thing where it was a journey for me, man. Like, cause it, it, it had different phases. When I was young, it went through the phase where I didn't really know what it was. And I, I had knowledge, but I, I wasn't taking it too serious. It's just, um, I had to go to the hospital and back out, like whatever. Um, then I got to the point where I knew what it was and it was affecting my career and my like basketball and how I approached that. Um, and, and so it was giving me a hard time there. And then I, I went through that phase where I was trying to hide it. Like I was, I didn't want people to know about it. So I was ashamed of it. And I don't even know where that started. Well, I'm doing where it started. Um, it, it had nothing to do with the disease itself. It was more so about like the stigma that, that it carried. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't even know where that starts or what, you know, Same. like why it's like that. Um, but I went through that phase too. And then being in the sports world where like, you know, weakness is, 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 is um, capitalized upon, like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I don't even want to show weakness in a sense. Like, I don't even want nobody to know that I got this. Um, you know, and then understand that I'm, that I'm different. And then I got to the, you know, you go through enough of it. And I'm like, yo, I'm tired of feeling like this. And I started to, you know, do the, do the, do the, the self work, um, like as far as meditating and, and really understanding the disease and then like coming to peace, coming to peace with myself. Um, you know, for anybody dealing with like emotional and mental, uh, issues in terms of dealing with the disease, like the best way to approach it is to kind of get a deeper understanding of yourself and where it stems from. And where, um, where that, those feelings stem from and going from there, you know what I mean? And, and, and for me, it was kind of meditation and it was reading. Mm. Uh, and once I start, I'm, I'm a heavy reader, man. So once I started to read more, um, and just, you know, and not even books about sickle cell, just, I like yeah. it's about life and other people. Just once for I started sure. to understand that everybody's dealing with something and, you know, we all kind of, we're all, we're all, we're all one collective, man. So like that isn't even directly a, a correlated with sickle cell, but it helped me understand that this is just who I am. This is what I deal with. Um, and it allowed me to like practice like presence and stand present and, and, 
you know, staying positive and, and yes. uh, stay positivity, but just knowing that, you know, everything's going to be all right. And it's, it's uncontrollable. Like this is yeah. super so it's an uncontrollable bro. So it's like, what? Like, it doesn't help me to spend time. You know, yes. on it. And that's, that's a, that's easier said than done. It takes time to develop that and make that a consistent thing in your life and in your, in your mind. Yeah. Um, but anybody watching this that has sickle so I would say make sure that you take care of the mental side of it and what it's yes. address what it is, understand what you're feeling, and then approach that. Whether that be therapy, whether it's it's it's, it's yourself, whether it's talking to someone that has it, talking to anybody, um, reading like it was for me, man, whatever. But to answer your question, I'm sorry, I, I was I was kind of a long winded no, way. Man, to you too, that. man. You good, man. Uh, no. uh, yeah, that's that's kinda how I approached that. Bro, dude, um yeah, you so many great stuff, man. I think People fail to make the correlation between, I don't even think this is just a sickle cell thing, is between just having good mental health and your physical health. I yeah. really think there's a correlation. Like, I, I try to explain it to people, but it, it's kind of, it's a weird thing. But I feel like when you are mentally right, it also plays a role physically because you're less stressed. And stress actually causes sickle cell. And I don't, it's not even just stress is one of the biggest things that just cause a lot of health issues. So, you know, I'm always, I have a sickle cell channel. And in my channel, I'm always explaining the process of how stress can cause and magnify more pain. So just mm -hmm. alleviating that stress mentally actually plays a role in, in decreasing your stress. And a lot of people don't even recognize if they have stress because some people it's so normalized in their life oh my God. You, know, you don't even know if they're stressed or not you know and so i, I it's, it's unfortunate man but I, I when you speak to like that stigma of sickle cell billy like mm -hmm. i know what you mean but i'm gonna be honest bro um i've i'm 28 i haven't i haven't chose to tell anyone i had sickle cell until i turned 26 and i started doing it publicly you know because um i personally oh, believe I personally believe um, I did a public on my sickle cell YouTube channel. I wanted to, I did, I want, I've always talked thought about doing it in different platforms, but I wasn't quite sure how to do it with other people. So I said, let me at least start it publicly. And for me, um, starting my sickle cell channel was very precious because it was almost a form of healing for myself to not be ashamed of myself. You know what I'm saying? To say that, no, just because I have sickle cell doesn't mean that I'm not capable, that I'm not smart, that I can't achieve what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? And that was a sure. it was kind of like for myself. And, and, and also, I'm constantly thinking about other people because I know how painful and traumatic it is that I'm thinking, man, I'm a doctor and I'm having trouble learning and like taking care of myself. I can only imagine other people who aren't as lucky as us and are as healthy who are going through it, you know? So I kind of wanted to take it upon myself to start, you know, spreading more awareness and, and bringing light to people with sickle cell. I think it's very needed. And, um, and, and I'm glad that you, you know, felt the need to break that stigma within yourself and, and not be ashamed of it. You know, you know, right. I, when it comes, when you see, when you said, I don't know where that stigma comes from. It's a, I, I agree, but I'm, it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, I think sometimes your household can play a, a, a big deal sometimes because they're always telling you, oh, sickle cell is bad. And, and I, I understand it's a disease. It can kind of start making you feel ashamed of it. And you're kind of, you know, almost having negative thoughts towards your own self in something you couldn't even control, you know? And so I, I think part of that stigma is like your family, out of love, they're telling you like, hey, you have this sickle cell and they're kind of like buttering you up and kind of, you know, it's, it's out of love, but it's also kind of like, makes you kind of feel like there's something wrong with you you know what i'm saying yeah, you understand sure. yeah sure. i think i think i think uh for me that's that's kind of the that was one of the the biggest differences in my approach to it i think is like my family really didn't like allow me to use sickle cells like a crutch man like they 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 Get, did a great job of balancing like the knowledge of the disease without like pouring too much fear in with it you know mm -hmm. what i mean um and that i i gotta give him credit for that because like that that uh foundation it, it it stuck with me to this day you know what i mean and like yeah. i think it was just like the initial approach to it and then once i realized like all right what i'm dealing with is serious man but like it's not a reason that not you know go for whatever it is i'm going for it like and that's that's a lot of the reason why i wrote the book too man because it was like a means of meditation for me first of mm -hmm. all like it allowed me to take everything that i've been through for the most part yes um, 
leading up to, you know, that moment in time, I finished that book when I was probably like 27, 28. Okay. So, uh, I started writing it. Yeah. I wrote it, for, wrote it over probably a span of like a year or two and, and just on and off. But it started off me like just journaling, man. And just really like getting stuff off my chest. Yeah. Like, and, and, Cause I, I'm, a, I'm, you know, like anybody, I think I, I, I'm like my mind moves a lot. Sometimes I need some, I need a way yeah. to kind of put let it out on paper. Yeah. And just kind of, um, let those things go. So, you know, writing a book, I, it, it made me, you know, one for myself, it allowed me to release some of that, uh, some of those experiences and clean, I won't even call it tension cause it wasn't necessarily tension. It just allowed me to take, you know, some weight off my shoulders in the sense of like yeah. sharing a story. Um, and then talk about sickle cell and hopefully put a dent in that stigma within the sickle cell community. Like, ah, uh, damn, I got sickle cell. Like I can't do anything. Like I can't do yeah. shit. I got sickle cell. It's like, bro, whoa, whoa, whoa. like, no, like, and, 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 and understandably so like from a perspective of Western medicine, like it's like, yo, this is a serious disease. Like y'all need to play it safe. Don't do anything that could possibly, you know, hurt you or, or send you into crisis. Yeah, like understandably so. Yeah, but like also, I wanted to present a perspective of someone who has it, who has been able to accomplish certain things, to be like, yo, yes. you really that much different than anybody. I'm not really that much different than anybody else that got sickle cell. It's just yeah. the mental approach, like the yes. mental approach is the strong is the is the surest way to ensure that you will be able to live a fulfilling life with this disease. Yes. It's the mental approach, bro. Like. And the healthy, the health aspect of it, yeah, it's a part of it. But like with the book, that's really what I wanted to touch on. It's like, hey, listen, I play basketball. That's what I do. Like it'll be a million basketball players after me. The thing that's that allows me to, you know, be different in this space and stand out is that I've been able to reach heights um, that no one has ever been able to reach that has had the disease. Yeah. Like now, am I different? No, this is how we did it. Like, what's the difference? Like the mental approach to to the disease, yeah. man. So. Stigmas, I don't know how they, I don't know how it starts. Um, I think also there's a stigma to it because of the demographic that it affects. It, it's yes. like the most, uh, um, uh, it's like the biggest health disparity in modern medicine to me anyway, is talking to a doctor about, it or, or, uh, she's a nurse practitioner about this not too long ago. And she was telling for me, sure. like, hey, like, thank you for shedding light on, on the biggest health and uh, racial disparity in modern medicine. And I think just because of the group of people that it affects, you know, the world we live in, you naturally just don't get as much light toward the disease. So for sure. as a kid, when you have it, you don't feel like you got that much support. And that's the thing too. It's like, when you feel like you don't have as much support, you're like, damn, I'm out here dealing with this and this. It's, I can't do anything because of it. It's like, nah, bro. Like, that's not how this works. Like, you're, you're, like, you gotta take it upon yourself, but, you know, you can live yeah. a healthy, fulfilled life with sickle cell, for sure. And, and, bro, I just, I can't, I can't harp on the fact. I know it sounds like woo woo and it, it, it doesn't make sense, but it does make sense to me. I've noticed that people who have a more positive mindset towards life, it just seems to be a correlation towards their health as well. And maybe you could say, yeah, oh, maybe sure. they're just healthier. But I think it, that positive mindset actually embraces good health as well. I've noticed yeah. that a lot of sickle cell warriors that I've met who, Yes, I've I've noticed a lot of sickle cell warriors who are kind of going through it and 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 are having a tough time. They tend to have a lot more of a negative mindset, and they also have a belief that they can't get out of the situation. And so, because they believe that they're forever doomed, it's just kind of constantly um like going on and on. And I'm not here to like to put them down. It's just something I've noticed. Like no, I've noticed that the warriors who are a lot more healthier, they tend to be a lot more positive. And maybe you could say, well, maybe because they're not going through the crisis, they're more positive. But I, I beg to differ. I really think that, that they're, they're probably a lot less stressed about life and that stress allows them to be, you know, a, a lot more functioning, you know? Another, another thing I wanted to, to... Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no. I don't want to say, like, I don't want... I mean, I got sick with stuff, so I can't be insensitive to people that have it. Like, yeah. It's like, bro, like, great attracts great, bad attracts bad, bro. It's like you, you, uh, everybody, everybody got something, man. Like, it's like, yeah, this is a serious thing. Like, you understandably, understandably so. But, like, 
you said there's a there's a direct correlation between like healthy mindsets and healthy lifestyles. To me, it's because yes. it's, a, it's a it's a respect thing. Like I think I'm worthy of living a healthy lifestyle. Like, yeah, exactly. I don't mean I'm not worthy of living a healthy lifestyle. So I respect my body. You know what I'm saying? Like I respect my mind and what I allow what I allow to to, to go into it. It's it's a it's a um, it's an all encompassing thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's a saying that, that I like to use is like how you do anything is how you do everything, man. So like, if you, mm -hmm. if you got a negative mindset and, and, and you sloppy in, in one aspect of your life, you're going to be sloppy in every aspect of your life. You know what I'm saying? Yes. If you got a healthy mindset in the way that you approach things, if you got a, a winner's mindset in the way that you approach things, it don't matter. Yes. So that's you because you know that in the, on the back end, no matter what happens, you approach it with the right with the right mindset, and you're willing to deal with whatever the consequences and whatever the results of what. And it just happens. The yes. world that we live in, you get rewarded when you you know when you maintain and you stay solid and you have a you have a you have a you have a positive outlook. Um, yes. And you can't take this stuff too seriously, man. Like ah, oh, sickle cell. It's, it's I can't do any like bro. It's just it's life, man. Just you know. Yeah. Right. You you can yeah. either have sickle cell and feel like shit all day. And this isn't in terms of like the crisis. I know, I know that pain, so I get it. And it's okay yeah. to feel. You gotta feel what you feel. But you know, it's also upon you. The responsibility is on you to to um, get yourself in a better mind state mentally, and then also, you know, try to get yourself in a better mind state physically. Um, you know, and it's not easy. It's hard as hell. Yeah, Be yeah. Honest, but, it's it's, know, it's, it's not, not easy. Best. But having sickle so, um for me, it's kind of like. You know, it's it's been like a gift and a, a blessing and a curse Man, because you know it, it it the curse is the physical pain that comes from it and how psychologically tough you have to be. But uh, for me, it has formed the character. It has developed a character in me that I cannot replace because for me, because I've been through so much hardships. Anytime I'm about to do something, whether it's graduating from pharmacy school or buying real estate or all the other accomplishments I've achieved, I'm always looking at it from like, this is nothing compared to sickle cell. So I feel like it has allowed me to achieve and look at things a lot more easier because I'm like, I've been through so much worse. If this is what I have to go through, like this is nothing compared to what I've been. So, you know, it's like, it's, I, I look at it as like a, a, a blessing and a curse, but um, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's it's, it's it definitely built the man I am today, and it seems like it's done the same thing for you too, right, Billy? Yeah, for sure, man. Like, um, yeah, I'm mean, yeah. So if you've read it, it's, it's a part of the book where I kind of talk about um, like failure and 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 change and like time and how it affects your life and and, I, and um, something that that I always think about is like any any perceived like failure or or any perceived hardship kind of holds. Um, it holds a benefit of like equal or greater value on the other side. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a thing of perception and perspective. Like what you're talking about to me, when I take from that is perspective, like your perspective yes. is split on the disease. It's like, you look at it and say, all right, this sucks. Right. But like, what's the lesson to be learned from this? Right. And yes. let me apply that mindset to other aspects of my life. Cause my life isn't only about this one thing that yes. you know, like this signal cell is perspective. So I've been through this. I know what real pain feels like. I know what I know. I know the responsibility that I got to take with this, with this disease. Um, I know how healthy and consistent I got to be studying for this test. That ain't shit, cause I feel good right now, and I know that I'm capable. You know what I mean? I know that yes. I had discipline, I had ability. Like, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm go through pharmacy school with flying colors. I'm gonna go get this real estate. I'm gonna go do, a yeah, because I know that, um, like my 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 person. I won't call it persistence, but my ability to deal with this disease ha has built confidence in me as well. Yeah, who I am and what I'm capable of. Um, yes, you know, and that's nothing but perspective. That's nothing but yes. respect, man. You know what I mean? Yes. And for me, it's the same way. Um, you know, I like to think sickle cell is probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. Because if, if, wow. if, 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 it, if it wasn't, then I'd just be some other one of the thousands of dudes that has played in the NBA in their life. And, you know, yeah. if like it's allowed me to, um, it, it's allowed me to affect the collective. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah. I've been blessed yeah. with that. Like I've been blessed with that opportunity and that responsibility. And that's an amazing, amazing, amazing blessing, man. Cause it's like, all right, yeah. I've been able to play basketball and do this, but I have sickle cell. So now guess what? I can kind of impact on a deeper level. 
Um, and it makes all the crisis and all that stuff, man. That was, that's, that's nothing compared to, to, to the interactions, you know what I'm saying? The people, yeah. like, you know, and, and it wasn't anything I did special. I was, I, I was, I was blessed with this opportunity. I was blessed with sickle cell. I was blessed with all of that. And I genuinely look at it like that. Cause I wouldn't be who I was if I ain't have it. 